The sutras of Vedic mathematics apply to all areas of mathematics, pure and applied. So that must include statistics. And statistics is a subject which does not really appeal to most people. The impression is one of masses of percentages, probabilities, graphs, which are not particularly intelligible and we tend to switch off. But nowadays statistics is taught from primary school level onwards and its range of application is increasing. So we might ask what does Vedic mathematics have to offer in statistics? And I'd like to make two suggestions. One is a chart that shows the whole subject at a glance and therefore makes it easier for people to relate to and see the thing as a whole. And the other is that we can relate the various areas of statistics to natural mental processes and therefore the sutras of Vedic mathematics. So let's look at that chart first of all. And we will start with the population. We have some background population which could be just about anything. It could be the heights of American adult males, time spent on a website by visitors, or how often individuals visit a certain aisle in the supermarket. So we may have data about the whole population, or we may take a sample from it and deduce things from that sample. So the first thing we're going to do is to collect our data and various things need to be considered for that. So the planning is important for various reasons. We don't want to have a biased, biased values. And we need to think about how we're going to collect the data, where we're going to collect it from, and things like that. So this is the area of data collection. And once we've got it, it gives us more information about the background population itself and will enable us to make predictions. So data collection comes under the sutra by addition and subtraction because all the values are combined together. The sutra for statistics as a whole is specific and general, Vyashtiya Samashti, because the whole purpose of statistics is to draw general principles and facts from sampling specific values. So the next section in our chart is called descriptive statistics because once we've got our data we begin to examine it in different ways and we may produce charts, pie charts, bar charts, histograms and so on and that gives us more information about the population and enables us to see it and any idiosyncrasies it's got uh, and understand it better. And we also may want to analyse the results, so we could work out averages, mode, mean, median, and the spread of the data. And that again gives us uh, a better understanding of the population. The sutra here is transpose and apply, because the data is being transformed into an alternative structures that we can more easily assimilate. Then, before we get on to the final section, we have to include probability, which is really an area from pure mathematics, but it's essential here for us to go further, as you'll see. So these are the various topics within probability, and they can be listed there and referred to, and that helps us also to understand the population. And it comes under the sutra proportionately. The final section is called Inferential Statistics and this is where we use some basic model or mathematical model to understand our population more. So we might use the binomial or normal distributions and get more refined and precise information about the population we're dealing with and understand the population better. And of course we can go around this loop as many times as we like or any of these loops having gone round here and understanding our population better after collecting the data we may decide to adjust and change our data collection for some reason or other. So we've got all these loops that we can go around 
uh, eventually giving us a really good understanding, as much as we want, of the background population. So that's the chart. It can be elaborated, it can be made simpler, uh, depending on the age of the child being taught. You may just want to concentrate on the first section here, or the first two sections. And other relevant topics can be introduced that maybe are not here. On the sutra here in this last section is by one more than the one before. Now we're going to take a look at some of these topics in terms of natural mental processes. So first of all, data collection. Actually, we're collecting data all the time. Our senses operate continuously and take in information which we deal with. But we may deliberately and consciously collect data if we need to make a decision of some kind. So if we want to buy a new car, for example, uh, we may ask friends, we may look in magazines, uh, we may look on the internet, all kinds of things to collect the data we need to make our decision. So this is a natural mental process that we do all the time, and of course it's a topic in statistics. The means or averages also we are using, because once we've got our data, we process it. We may think about it visually, in terms of graphs and so on, or we may actually analyse it, work out means and spreads. Not exactly, but it's just a natural mental process to have a mean value. So we have values and standards that we relate to. We know if a value is absurd, for example, or if it's about right. And this comes under means comes under the sutra we actually samashti again specific and general because a single value can represent a whole collection of values we have an impression of how long it might take to complete a task and we use that information in our day-to-day -day work spread we have a natural sense of these spreads of data so we can tell if a value is absurd if you're buying a car, you would have some idea of the sort of range of values you're expecting to pay. Or we know if the price of a bag of apples is overpriced. And for your favourite restaurant, you would have an idea of the average number of people that might be in it at a particular time, but also the spread of values. So you would say, well, you could guess that there'll be anything from this number to this number of people in the restaurant then. So these things are all natural mental processes. Probabilities too are natural. We judge probabilities all the time. What are the chances it's going to rain tomorrow? We can estimate, we can have a, an idea of how likely that is. It's just a natural mental ability we have. And hypothesis testing. This is also natural. Children play and they experiment, they form hypotheses, test them, analyse the results and adjust their beliefs on the basis of what they discover. So this is something we do all the time. We experiment, we form opinions. One interesting point in relation to all this is that if we can correlate these statistics topics with mental activities, then we can work the other way around and examine our mental processes and learn from them and maybe use those for, our, um, for developing new techniques. So that's it. Um, to summarise, we've got the statistics chart that serves the entire subject and all its branches in one place. And we've seen that these statistics topics can be directly traced to our natural thinking processes. And that makes them more relevant. And the whole subject of statistics can be made more palatable, interesting and relevant to students.